This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good day, everyone. We're coming on the air with breaking news from the royal family. Kensington Palace just released this video of Princess Kate announcing she's been diagnosed with cancer and is now undergoing chemotherapy. The announcement comes after the Princess of Wales underwent abdominal surgery at a London clinic earlier this year. It also comes almost two months after the palace announced King Charles was also diagnosed with cancer. Today's announcement follows weeks of worldwide intrigue over Kate's health and her whereabouts. We're going to play for you now the full video Kensington Palace just released of Princess Kate explaining her diagnosis in her own words. Here it is. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment, but most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too, as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you it means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. And it's Princess Kate in a message that was recorded on Wednesday. Let's go straight to our international correspondent, Molly Hunter, outside Buckingham Palace. Molly, what else are we hearing from the royal family about all this? Lester, we do have some more details from Kensington Palace, but I just want to pick up on a couple of the headlines from that video. That was a deeply personal, emotional video from a mother, from a princess. And just to walk through the timeline, because this has been one of the major questions, she talked about that planned abdominal surgery in January. She says at the time, it was thought it was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. That part we knew, Lester. And then they said, she said, in post-op tests, they found that the cancer had been present. And that is when they started a course of preventative chemo. And she said she is in early stages of that treatment. So she has already started that chemotherapy. Moving to kind of what else we know from Kensington Palace, why they possibly waited, I think three things stand out from what we have heard from the palace. The first is that she has needed time to recover, recover from that surgery, but also start this treatment. The second, of course, is processing. She is 42 years old, Lester. She is healthy. She has a young family. So for her to process this news, but also for her and William to process this as a couple. And then I think the most important thing that we've heard from Kensington Palace, but also in that message, you just heard her and you heard the emotion in her voice talking about telling the kids, finding the right time as a parent to make sure they understood that she was going to be okay, that she uh, was getting the help and the care that she really needed. The other thing we know from Kensington Palace is we will see her at events, but that should not necessarily indicate that she is back to a full course of royal duties. 
Also from Kensington Palace, Lester, a plea to the public, to the press, to people uh, who have, of course, been very, very interested for the last couple of weeks. We've talked about that feverish, intense uh, interest across social media, but a plea really to kind of stop the speculation now. They have come forward. They have given us the information. They have been transparent. Now a plea to people really respect her privacy that she deserves. There is no indication, Lester, when we will see her next. And I think on the medical side, the other really important thing that Kensington Palace made clear to the media today is we do not know and we will not necessarily find out immediately what type of cancer she is getting treatment for. Lester? Molly, can you describe the level of pressure to the extent you saw in the British public for some more definitive answers about what was going on with her? Yeah, Lester, we have covered this for the last couple of weeks, and it's been very interesting watching it play out, not only in the mainstream press, but also across social media. After that announcement back in January that the 42-year-old Princess of Wales had undergone successful surgery, uh, the questions about why that planned surgery even had to happen, we still don't know. And then, of course, the intrigue about why she wasn't coming back necessarily when she initially said she was going to come back, Lester. Initially, they said she was going to come back on Easter. Then it looked like it was slipping until the end of maybe Easter holidays. There was a ton of interest. We asked Kensington Palace, I would say, almost daily in the last couple of weeks, as did many of our colleagues in the media, what are we uh, going to learn? Why haven't we seen her? When will we see her? What more can you tell us to try to quell the rumors and the speculation uh, and really less to the wild conspiracy theories that were popping up across social media? And they were very tight lips. And I think part of the information and the briefing that we got today from Kensington Palace, part of her message was really to explain to us why they had kept quiet, why they had really fiercely protected her privacy. Uh, but the pressure, I think, was immense. And I think that is uh, clearly part of why the timing and why the announcement came out today. Can we factor anything in the fact that there is this investigation underway as to who may have tried to get access to her medical records at the hospital where she was treated? Kensington Palace wouldn't be drawn on that. We've been asking them about that all week, Lester. We certainly uh, have asked the hospital. We have asked police about that. No one will comment on the status of that investigation. Uh, I think that seems to be a very separate issue at this time. I'll leave it to analysts to kind of uh, read the tea leaves of whether or not that kind of made them so nervous that something might come out that they had to kind of beat that investigation or beat any leaks to really come out transparency, transparently, excuse me. But clearly, from Kate's perspective, she wanted her kids to hear this from her, not from the press, not from kind of any kind of leaks that may come out uh, if, in fact, that breach did happen. All right. Molly Hunter, I'll ask you to stand by, but thank you. Let me go to uh, our medical contributor, Dr. John Torres. Dr. Torres, there are so many unknowns about the cancer diagnosis, but we do know this treatment is being described as a, a chemotherapy uh, being sent, offered in a preventative way. Is that a common practice? And what might that say about the where the cancer is? And Lester, it is a common practice, especially when they do a surgery like this, thinking it might be non-cancerous when they go in. And then in pathology results afterwards, when they take the samples they've taken out of during the surgery, looked at them under a microscope and said, oh, no, we've seen some cancer cells, but we don't see cancer necessarily that we can surgically remove. We know it's there. We want to prevent it from getting bigger. And if it does start to get bigger, make sure that's a slow rate so they use this preventative chemotherapy. And that's important to understand. And that happens to a lot of people, breast cancer, for example, probably the biggest example I can give you is tamoxifen. After breast cancer, they'll use tamoxifen to try to prevent it from coming back in some cases, and that's very common, Lester. And, and again, we don't know the type of cancer, and, and it's probably useless for us to speculate on it, but the chemotherapy, does that remain the gold standard in these, these kinds of things? It depends on how, what type of cancer and how often and how well they can remove that cancer. But for the most part, yes, chemotherapy, especially when they think there still might be something there. And remember, with cancer, it only takes a few cancer cells to start growing and turn into a cancer that needs surgical removal. They're trying to prevent that from happening. But this is very common for something like this to happen. Now, the thing you do have to realize, too, is chemotherapy, depending on what kind she gets, it could really reduce her immune system to the point where she really shouldn't be out in public. And I think that may be part of what's been going on these last few months of trying to keep her out of the public eye so her immune, her immune system can get back up to where it needs to be to protect her from what might be out there in the public when she's out and about. All right, Lester. Dr. John, I'll ask you to stand by. I'm going to pursue that uh, same line now with Dr. Eleonora 
Teplinski. She's the head of breast and gynecological medical oncology at Valley Health Systems in New Jersey. She's also a clinical assistant professor at the Icon School of Medicine. Doctor, you study cancers. What's your takeaway from what little we know, what we heard uh, from the princess from her own lips? Well, as you said, it's very little that we know. We don't know what kind of cancer that she has, and so it's hard to talk about the treatment. But what we can say is that it seems like everything was removed, and she's undergoing chemotherapy to as she, they've mentioned, prevent to reduce the risk of recurrence, which is a common practice for either gynecologic or abdominal cancers. I think a key point to talk about is potential side effects of chemotherapy because they're pretty broad in general. Most people think about chemotherapy, they think of hair loss, but we also see fatigue. We see low blood counts, talking about that immunosuppression that she could be experiencing loss of appetite, mouth sores, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So these are some of the common side effects that happen with chemotherapy, and she's going to have to navigate those. I, I think it's really remarkable that she talked about talking to her children. We see a lot of young women you know, having to navigate parenting and cancer and chemotherapy, and that's very challenging. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, as, as she spoke as a mother, her concern for her children, incredibly understandable. As a physician, how do you deal with the emotional side of, of a diagnosis like this? Honestly, I think sometimes the emotional side is even harder than the physical side to navigate. Um, there are so many changes that come with the cancer diagnosis, change in body image, change in femininity. Everything feels different. You know, the life that someone thought they were leading changes overnight. There's a lot of grief that comes with that. And navigating that is very difficult. And again, adding being a young mother and having to not only manage her emotions, but her children's concerns and her children's emotions. And I think the key is to stress that as she's done, that she's going to be okay. Children want to know that their mom is going to be okay. That's the most important thing for them. All right, doctor, thank you. I'll ask you to stand by if you would. Let me bring in Katie Nichols. She is an NBC News royal contributor and the royal editor for Vanity Fair. Katie, what does this moment mean for the royal family, understanding you know, what, what the king himself is going through as well? Well, Lester, we're in um, unprecedented times. Um, it means, quite simply, that we have two senior members of the royal family undergoing cancer treatment. The king of of course, um, and now the Princess of Wales, um, two of the most important members of the family, two of the most popular members of the royal family. And when you think back to recent weeks and frankly the madness that circulated on social media, so much of that has been generated by um, a public affection for and curiosity, of course, into the life of the Princess of Wales, but she is much loved and much adored. This news that's broken this evening will, will come as a, as a shock to many, um, but I actually suspect as a relief in many ways for William and Kate that they've finally been able to come out, put those rumours to an end. They've been able to have time to process this information, to tell their three young children, which was clearly the priority in all of this. And now they've broken up for the Easter holidays. Hopefully they will be somewhere nice and quiet and able to just come to terms with this as a family, which, as she said in that incredibly moving video statement, you know, this has been a tough time. Would you imagine the public will be protective of her as she goes through this? I would hope so. Um, and I would hope that many of the people that have peddled these conspiracy theories, which have ranged from her being in a coma to having botched cosmetic surgery, might just take a break from the keyboard. Um, you know, she's obviously, as a family, they've been going through a huge amount. You know, she's known um, for some time that um, during that operation where she thought it wasn't cancer, post-operative tests showed very unfortunately that it is. And she's now in the early stages of preventative chemotherapy. And I think that word preventative is really important. So much positivity and optimism about that word. Um, and um, yes, let's hope this really does put an end to all those conspiracy theories and she can just be left alone. I mean, very much part of that video message was appealing for privacy for her and for her family. It's obviously taken some time for her to come to terms with what's happened, but also to explain such a, a devastating diagnosis to three very young children. All that said, do you feel it was important that she made this statement, that she at least made an attempt to end the rumors and speculation? 
Well, I think given that we were told we'd be likely seeing her post Easter, um, she says she's in the early stages of preventative chemotherapy. So obviously she's doing well at the moment, but she could be hit by serious fatigue. There are, we know, many side effects. So, you know, what would have happened if she didn't return over Easter? There were all those rumours this week that we'd see her at church on Easter Sunday. I think the pressure would have just been unbearable. And I think inevitably um, this, this announcement was going to come. But, you know, as I've learned with this couple, and particularly, let's with the Princess of Wales. She does it in her time, on her terms. And what comes first for her isn't the public trying to find out what's happened here. It's about protecting her family. Katie, uh, thank you. I'll ask you to stand by as well. Let me bring in Erin Hill now. She's a senior royals editor for People magazine. Erin, uh, first of all, let me ask you, how did the princess seem to you in, in those remarks that, again, were recorded on Wednesday? I think as we've seen from Kate always, she's incredibly poised um, and it's clearly a very emotional um, moment for her. And um, she she just came across as, as very personal and this is a candid moment, um, but but very posed. Uh, and, and we talked about a little bit of whether there was some, some relief attached to this. It's obviously hard to know. We can't talk to her right now. But for the public, is there some relief in, in at least knowing um, what a, you know, a battle she's fighting? I think so. I think she she is um, the most popular member of the royal family and so beloved. And there was a lot of concern, I think, you know, as we've said, a lot of the rumors and conspiracy theories that was born out of the the love for her um, and the interest and the concern. And so now that there is um, a diagnosis attached to to what she's been dealing with and more insight to what um, she's been handling behind the scenes, I think there's going to be more sympathy and understanding um, of why she needed this time and, and what she's dealing with. And certainly the palace and the princess were, were feeling the pressure from within the public. How intense was the pressure uh, in these last couple of weeks? We know the flap over the editing of the photo. Um, can you describe what, what the mood was like? Yeah, we know that Kate was was said to be very devastated about the controversy that erupted from that photo that was edited. And, um, you know, we know now that the the palace is really grappling with with uh, a lot of the communication being out of control, um, not being able to control the fervor on social media. And so um, it's obvious that behind the scenes are they're having conversations of, of how they can get out a- ahead of this now. And she's um, needed some time to uh, grasp the diagnosis herself, to tell her children and now knowing that Easter was coming and a lot of people were expecting her maybe to step out on Easter and soon after, um, she knew that the speculation would only only grow from there. So it was important for her to want to be as, as forthcoming as she could and, and finally put a lot of the rumors to rest. All right. Aaron, thank you for being with us during all this. I want to read part of the statement from Kensington Palace that provides a little more detail on her treatment. It says, in part, quote, the princess is now on a recovery pathway Having commenced a course of preventative chemotherapy, the princess started a course of preventative chemotherapy in late February. We want to play now what Princess Kate said about her diagnosis. Here it is. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London. And at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. A portion of what we heard from the princess in a remark uh, that were recorded on Wednesday and released just a short time ago. Let me bring in NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. Dr. Azar, what do you make of this, what you heard in in those remarks and and the uh, palace's statement? Yeah, you know, Lester, again, as the oncologist already pointed out, without knowing which organ was involved or the stage or the grade of the tumor, we really can't make any comment um, or speculate on prognosis. But what I will say is that if they did indeed remove, um, you know, an organ and it took them a little bit of time to actually find the cancer, which means they were really, really looking closely for it, did some probably some send out tests, some special stains, um, that in fact, if this is preventative chemotherapy and not treatment dose, um, you know, certainly that would 
um, you know, indicate hopefully that it is at an earlier stage and, and she will come through the treatment and do quite well. All right, Dr. Natalie Azar, thank you. That is going to conclude this NBC News special report. There's a lot to report here. We'll have much more ahead on our streaming network, NBC News Now, online at NBCNews.com and tonight on NBC Nightly News. I'm Lester Holt. Thank you for watching, everyone. Good day. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.